Around 760 BC, Jonah became a prophet of God. A prophet is a messenger that God appoints to share a message about his will and the future. And so the story begins with God calling Jonah to deliver a message to the sinful city of Nineveh. But Jonah, he, he doesn't want to preach to Nineveh, so he decides to run away from this calling and he decides to go in the opposite direction of where God wants him to go. And so he gets on a random boat with people he doesn't even know and he sails away. Well, you can't run away from God. So God sends a huge storm and the boat is about to sink. The passengers who happen to be very superstitious, they realize that Jonah is the reason that this storm came. And so they ask Jonah, how can they be saved? And Jonah says that if he sacrifices himself and is thrown overboard, that they will be saved. So Jonah lets them throw him overboard and then Jonah begins to embrace death. But again, you cannot run away from God's will. So out of nowhere, a big fish, some sort of whale we presume, swallows Jonah and Jonah is in the well for three days. After that, God makes the whale spit Jonah out and he ends up on land. And at this point, Jonah agrees to deliver God's message to the city of Nineveh. So Jonah approaches the city and he gives this message to them. Repent or your city will be destroyed in 40 days. Your city will be destroyed in 40 days. <laughs> now follow me here, this is all symbolic. Everything that is written here is with purpose and especially the numbers. So that's all he says. He, he goes to the city and he says to them, repent, basically. He says, listen to me, or your city will be destroyed in 40 days. Now, the amazing thing is, as soon as he says that, all of the people in the city, even the king, they immediately believe him. They really don't even ask any questions. They just stop doing evil and they even went on a fast to Jonah's God. So they just, as soon as he said that, they decided, okay, we'll listen to what you have to say. And because they repented and listened to Jonah's message, God's prophet, their city was not destroyed in 40 days. <laughs> now, let's see how this all ties to Jesus and provides evidence of who he is. <laughs> okay. All throughout the Old Testament, the stories prophetically point to the coming Messiah, and Jesus wanted those that he spoke to to understand that. In the last video, we saw how Jesus told the people that everything written about him through Moses must be fulfilled. Well, here, Jesus is about to let his audience know that not only is he within the story of Moses, but he is also within the story of Jonah. Now, when Jesus was teaching the crowds, many people believed in him. But many of them, especially the Jewish religious leaders, the Pharisees, did not believe in him. In fact, many of them criticized him and demanded that he perform miracles to prove who he was. And so in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus is going to give them an example of how Jonah prophetically foreshadows who he is. So here, the crowds and the Jewish leaders were coming to him and they were demanding that he perform signs to prove who he is. And Jesus says this to them in Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. He answered, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And here it is. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days 
and three nights in the heart of the earth. Hmm. So basically, he says to them that just like how Jonah sacrificed himself and then went inside of a whale for three days, I will sacrifice myself for the world and will be inside of Hades, the heart of the earth, for three days. And on the third day, just like how God raised Jonah out of the fish, God will raise me out of the grave. Wow. He tells them that will be the greatest sign that they will ever see. When he, on the third day, comes out as Jonah did. So when we look at the story of Jonah, I mean, really, Jesus is really just all over the story of Jonah. Remember how Jonah sacrificed his life to save the people on the boat from the storm? Well, that's an obvious foreshadow of what Jesus would do for the world. He would sacrifice himself. And then after that, he would be in the grave for three days, just like Jonah was then in the whale for three days. I mean, that's just that's clear. But check this out. Notice what it says in Jonah chapter one, verse 14. The people who were about to kill Jonah and throw him over the, the ship. Notice what they said when they prayed to God. They said, please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, Lord, have done as you pleased. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar, probably. Because just like how they asked for forgiveness before killing an innocent man, Jesus asked God to forgive his killers before killing him, an innocent man. <laughs> as he said, forgive them. For they know not what they do. <laughs> now, let's get even deeper. When Jonah was in the whale, he prayed to God. And notice what he said in his prayer. I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. <laughs> now, this right here is amazing. Because we know that Jonah was in a whale for three days. But here in this prayer, he says that he is in Sheol, which is the realm of the dead. So here we have a direct reference from Jonah himself that his three days in the whale is a parallel of someone being in the realm of the dead for three days. And this is why Jesus said that for three days, I will be in the heart of the earth, the realm of the dead. 